This is Mari Lane from the Buying Space Channel. Today I want to talk about ephemera. On Thursdays at 9 o'clock, I hang out at Nana Tink's Treasures. And Nana Tink has been giving away ephemera in a contest that's fair. It doesn't uh, matter uh, what your lag is on your computer, your internet speed, where you are in the world because she puts your name on a wheel and spins it and everybody has an equal chance. And I love fair contests. Now, I have one twice from Nantinks. Uh, the first ephemera package I have is right here. Uh, it's, uh, it was a package about conservation, irrigation on western farms. A lot of ephemera has lost knowledge. Here's a bulletin of the Sahara Club from 1967. I've uh, glanced through all of these and the Sahara Club in December of 1966 was a uh, two million dollar operation uh, which is quite impressive uh, for 1966. Your water supply and forests. I've glanced through this. It doesn't mention the beaver. The beaver is very important to the water supply, especially in uh, forested areas. Our natural resources. A study guide. A lot of this is lost knowledge about farming. And conservation since things have been um, corporatized uh, in agriculture and farming there are less people involved in it and less people retain that knowledge and less people have that knowledge of how to do things um, you know on a, a smaller scale uh, that information that knowledge is being lost uh, conservation activities for young people. When I was young, I was a member of the 4-H club. This is how to teach wilderness conservation. San Francisco Bay Charter of the Sahara Club. And I love this booklet, The Glory Trail. And this goes back into the history of the great American migration and impact on natural resources. Now I've been a genealogist since the age of 10 and I've uh, studied migration patterns um, that uh, were common among my ancestors and occasionally ran into uh, migration patterns of uh, other groups of people in studying that. And I love this picture because it starts with the conquistador. Of course, this has all um, been co uh, focused on the West Coast and goes to the locomotive <laughs> over here. But uh, it also, I, I, I was looking through this and found an interesting quote. Now, I had ancestors at Jamestown. And uh, every Thanksgiving, I have a beef about everybody talking about <clears throat> the Pilgrims and the Mayflower and how early that was. Um, Jamestown was at least 10 years before uh, the Mayflower. Uh, but also, once history, once the United States gained more states and more territory, the 13 colonies history continued to be in textbooks long after say Florida was a state and um, St. Augustine uh, had uh, settlers there uh, I believe in the 1580s, 1590s I have to look that up but anyway here it is in California and I think the Spanish were in California around the same time they were in St. Augustine um, or maybe before. That's something I need to look up. But here I was just opening this up and reading. In 1602, before Jamestown, Viscano had mapped a goodly part of the California coastline. The same year, Champlain began his tentative thrusts into St. Lawrence country. 
So, uh, I love history, and this is history combined with how it affected natural resources. Now, that's the first lot I won. Or, uh, the, the first game I won of Ephemera, I won a second one. I love these envelopes, Nana Tink. With the books on them. And that's just wonderful. So I won the second package of ephemera. And she has it wrapped in the uh, bag and then she has a cell thing another bag on top of that protected yes folks I'm using my bare hands thank you for your support Enjoy, and maybe you can make some dollars reselling this stuff. Well, it's hard for me to let go of some stuff, and I think I'll be quite honest with you. The bag in the bag is sealed really well to protect the paper. Uh, that's real important when you mail out ephemera. They did not get wet. Oh, Raisin Land, USA. This is adorable. Wow, all about raisins. A lot of this stuff is uh, teaching supplies. Uh, in libraries, they used to have vertical files of just tons of information like this. Fresh baked raisins. Ooh. Cinnamon Raisin Cupcakes. This is Be Radiant with Raisins. This has recipes on it. A little decorative ideas. Absolutely adorable. National Drink Association. You're never too young. <laughs> no kidding. National Drink Association. You're never too young. That's what it says. Not making it up, folks. Oh, look at the cute little barrels. National Drink Association. Hmm. Okay, here is a pamphlet that talks about soft drinks and having a balanced diet. National Soft Drink Association. Liquids for Living. Oh, this is horrible. Soft drinks are really bad for you. <laughs> I didn't know that exist. Oh, a brief discussion of sugar cane. I know there's a big brouhaha about uh, the information that was put out about sugar early on. I'll have to look that up and see if uh, either one of these uh, writers are... Um, mentioned in the controversy behind sugar and how it was pushed. Um, this is about soft drinks. A series of discussions with the elementary uh, teachers of America. What is the real story about good health and carbonated soft drinks? The fluid intakes of children. Wow. The genie of CO2. We've let the genie out of the bottle for sure. And that's that uh, lot. And uh, here's Nana Tink's thank you card. I really have fun hanging out with Nana Tink's. She knows my language when I say Silvercrest or Hognell or Carnival or Pyrex. She knows a myriad of information along to go along with that, uh, whereas most people don't. Most people are like, what is she talking about? But Nana Tinks speaks my language. Thank you, Nana.